Greetings, Phil here. Okay, this one goes out to Jackson from Whitby, Ontario. Now, Jackson wanted to know, how do batteries work and why do they stop working? Well, first, to understand how a battery works, you have to understand a little bit about electricity, which is basically the movement, the movement, movement of electrons. Now, electrons are those tiny little things that orbit around an atom, and I'm sure I'll get deeper into electrons and atoms and how that all works in another video, which will be linked below if I haven't already done it. So how does a battery create electricity? Well, it creates it through a chemical reaction. Let's say we've got two chemicals. This one is manganese oxide and this one is zinc. Now when they touch, when they interact chemically, lots of stuff happens. Electrons move around. They move around quite a bit during this reaction. And here's what happens as they react. They react and eventually it finishes. See, there you go. I have created green plasticine instead of blue or yellow. They have combined into this one and when it finally becomes this color, it basically stops. There's nothing left to do. No matter how much more I mix it, it will completely stay green, right? So think of it that way in terms of the chemical reaction. Eventually, it'll stop moving electrons around. So let's create a battery and see how it works. First, we need to start with our manganese oxide. And then zinc. There we go. Now let's make a battery. What we need is a copper rod and that's sort of what we start with. There we go, and zinc pop. Now, if I was just to wrap this around this, you know what's gonna happen right away? A chemical reaction's gonna start happening and that's not what we want. So what we need to do is add something in between these, like a wall, so that this chemical reaction can't happen unless we let it. And that wall is called an electrolyte. I'm gonna use this piece of paper like an electrolyte. There we go, all wrapped up in a wall. And this electrolyte in regular batteries is made of an alkaline, which is why they're called alkaline batteries. Now I wrap the next chemical. Now to just trim it and make it look nice. And there you go, our battery. Now to really understand how it works, we need to see it inside. So let's make a cross section. Okay, here's our battery. Copper rod in the middle, yellow zinc, wall of electrolytes in between, and manganese oxide on the outside. Now these little guys are electrons, and remember they have a negative charge. Now the zinc is full of electrons, which gives it a really big negative charge. Manganese oxide does not have many electrons, which means it has a positive charge. The electrons want to go from here to here, just like a magnet, but they can't go through the wall. So they just hang out here on this copper rod, waiting. So here's the deal with electricity. Electricity is basically just moving electrons. The electrons don't change, they don't, you don't lose any. All you do is you move the electrons and you get electricity. So all you have to do is move the electrons from one side of the battery to the other, which if you do it directly is called a short circuit. And you don't want that because you don't get it to do any work for you. What you want to do is attach a wire and I'll just draw that on this piece of paper here. And then the electrons move along the wire and we can get them to do work for us, like light up a light bulb as they travel to the other side. And that is how a battery works. We get electrons to move from this chemical along a wire to do work for us in the form of electricity and then back into the battery and then they go along and get deposited onto this chemical here, just like that. And that is how a battery works. And eventually, instead of a nice blue and yellow, you're going to get a green, meaning the chemical reaction has happened. They have mixed together. All the electrons have moved where they want to go, and you're not going to get any more electrons to move, so you need to get yourself a new battery. And I hope that explains it very well. Jackson, thank you very much for your question and for supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it because it lets me do things that I like to do, like teach kids cool stuff about science, like batteries. You can Google it. I don't think anybody's explained a battery using plasticine. So there you go. Totally original content, right? Yeah. Hey, that doesn't bounce very well. Yeah. I should get some bouncy plasticine. All right. Anyway, I'll see you next time. In the meantime, stay curious. If I throw it really hard though, I can... There we go, that bounced.